They wanted me to come back out. Um, it's just, I don't know, I guess it's just bad planning. But they, um, they got to be moving some stuff around backstage, and they didn't want y'all to be listening to it. So I'm supposed to distract you. So, um, so but when the curtains open, I don't, it's, it's the, I think it's going to be the, Lobby of the Enron building. <laughs> Did y'all hear about that? I didn't, I didn't lose any money in that. I didn't. I didn't. I put my money in an Altoid box. <laughs> I wouldn't put my money in something that don't make no sense. That's, that's the thing that... The companies don't make sense now. Used to, they'd name the companies like what they were, you know, like General Electric, General Motors, Ford Motor Company. Now it's like Blifflard, <laughs> Fleabotch.com. You know. Enron. Nobody, nobody ever says... Well, my, they not, not in this state. Nobody ever says, oh, if you're going by Big Lots, pick me up at Enron. <laughs> or, D Mr. Denby, I won't be at work on Friday. I got to go to the doctor. It's an um, outpatient thing. They got to run an Enron up in me. <laughs> Got a camera on the end of it. All I need is somebody to drive me home. Uh, yeah, I don't make. Of course, I don't know what Altoid means either. But I never thought about that before. These, sometimes they make the um, the word out of first letters that mean something, and they can't like have all that time to say that, you know. Like Ford Motor Company now would be FMC, you know. Enron could be like, you know, it could stand for like, exit now, retirees or nothing. <laughs> you know. I mean, it could, you don't know. That's, I say that a lot, you don't know. And you don't. That's sort of my motto. You don't know. It could be. You don't know. You can say that before or after about anything you can think of, and it'll probably be, be true. It could be. You don't know. The people that think they know don't know. And the people that know they don't know, they know. That's, that's called a thought loop. There's, there's a lot of thought loops out there. I mean, I didn't think of thought loops, but I named them. A thought loop is like a thought that like eats back on itself. 
like a snake eating its own tail. You know, like a thought loop would be like, you ever heard anybody say, oh, I don't like generalizations. Well, that's a generalization, you know, that's a thought loop. <laughs> or, um, I saw this one on a bumper sticker. Um, it was two bumper stickers on the car, you know. And the left one, the left bumper sticker said something about having more tolerance. And the right bumper sticker said, about zero tolerance. That driver was in a thought loop. <laughs> and he didn't know it. You, you can't get out of it if you don't know it. But as soon as you know it, you're out. That's how thought loops are. There's, just, there's a lot of thought loops out there. Like, I think every TV's like one big thought loop. Have you ever noticed it? Like, because everything on TV is about stuff that's on TV. And that's scary. I don't know. I don't know. I just get these ideas. I think about stuff. I do. I got a mind on me. It's a burden. I... Well, no, y'all. Y'all can sit there and do something and get it done without thinking about other stuff. But I'm, you know, I'm doing other stuff, you know, while I'm doing something. <laughs> like the other day, I was wiping lounge chairs and I had this idea um, for a female laxative. <laughs> it's called um, You Go Girl. That could work. You don't know. <laughs> when you got to, you know, just think of stuff on your own. Or you can get ideas just by talking to people. That's what, I mean, there's some people, though, that just, if you talk to them, they just shut off your brain. Like, <laughs> as soon as they start moving their mouth, your brain goes, okay, we don't need this. <laughs> But other people are like, you know, they start, you know, talking and your brain goes like that. And you don't know until you start talking to them either. I mean, you can't tell about people, and, you know, just by looking at them. You've got to, you know, sit down and talk to them. And like about 10 or 15 minutes, you can get up and say, that guy's an idiot. <laughs> That's true. But people, I don't know, it seems like people are afraid to talk to you nowadays. And it's like, eh, you know. I don't care. I'll talk to people. I'm wide open. I am. That's, that's just the way I've always been. That's, my daddy used to say that. He used to, he'd say, Ricky, you're wide open. And I was, too. When I, when I was a kid, I was hyper. And... And that was, you know, that was back before they knew that um, drugs would kill it off. <laughs> and they just let me be. You know, I, I got some stuff done. <laughs> I wasn't sitting around the house all happy. I was out in the yard, mean, doing stuff, you know, getting... Well, mainly I was um, digging holes. That's... That's what I, I was a digger. Some kids are diggers and some people ain't diggers, but I was, I was definitely a digger. I mean, shoot, I just enjoy, I'd come home from school and grab my shovel and start digging. My parents were cool about it too until I moved to the front yard and, and they said, no, get, get on back here in the backyard. Do you digging back there? And so I tried, tried to stick to it, but you might. I don't know. I'd just like to see how deep I could get them. You wouldn't believe some of the holes I dug. You know? There's people in our neighborhood are still talking about some of the holes, you know, because um, some people were injured. But, uh, <laughs> but I just, I don't know. I'd just like to see how deep I could get them. And when, when I couldn't get out, you know, I think, well, that's deep enough. <laughs> And my daddy would listen out for me. He, 
You know, he'd hear me, you know, going, help, help. <laughs> and that'd, that'd be our signal. <laughs> and he'd, he'd come over and pull me out. And he'd, he'd say, Ricky, you're wide open. You know? <laughs> But um, I'll talk to anybody now. I don't care. I'm wide open. That's, that's part of being wide open. It's just, you don't care. I'm, I don't. I think TV scares everybody to death about everything. So they just stay home and watch more TV. That's the thought loop. <laughs> think about that. That's, that is. That's, you know, it's like, oh, they be afraid of the air today or the this or that or turtleneck. <laughs> if you say, thought you were safe from your turtleneck, tune in tonight and be afraid of it. <laughs> <laughs> we can't have you going to bed without being afraid of something new. I don't care. I talk to people at the mall. You know, I just walk up and people start talking to them. People think I'm homeless. <laughs> they do. They go, go on, get. I talked. You got. It. I, I talked to this guy one time at the food court. He was he was uh, reading a book at the food court, and it was just there was like food wrappers um, around most people's tables, but his it was just uh, a book. It wasn't nothing but a book, and um, I thought something ain't right, and. I sat down and I said, what's that book you're reading there, Mr. Man? Well, it's not, that sad. It's not a sad story. <laughs> that baby's getting too much into it. <laughs> Take that baby out in the lobby and um, show him something that bounces. <laughs> That's what I do. I, well, I have two kids. Um, they, they're not babies no more because they grew. But, um, I got a girl and a boy, and the girl is, she's the oldest one. She's almost, she'll be like 13 in about 19 hours. She's been driving me crazy because, you know, she's always like, because oh, she's not built yet. And I'm like, you know, so what if you never work at Hooters? Who cares? She's got her heart set on it. <laughs> but I, oh, but I was talking to this guy at the food court, and I, and I sat down beside him, and um, you know, I was pretending to eat a, a corn dog or something, and, blah, 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 and I said, what's that book you're reading there, Mr. Man? And um, he said it was mythology. You know, and I said, oh, you mean like Zeus and unicorns and stuff like that? And he looked at me and he said, Throughout the inhabited world, in all times and under every circumstance, the myths of man have flourished, and they have been the living inspiration of whatever else may have appeared out of the activities of the human body and mind. It would not be too much to say that myth is the secret opening through which the inexhaustible energies of the cosmos pour into human cultural manifestation. Religions, philosophies, arts, Social forms of primitive and historic man, prime discoveries in science and technology, the very dreams that blister sleep boil up from the magic ring of myth. And I said, well, I didn't know. <laughs> and, and I sort of wanted to change the subject. And, uh, <laughs> I said, well, have you ever had a dream where you show up at the mall in your underwear and you have to work at the Pearson Pagoda? And he said, dream is the personalized myth, myth the depersonalized dream. Both dream and myth are symbolic in the same general way of the dynamics of the psyche. But in dream, the forms are quirked by the peculiar troubles of the dreamer. Whereas in myth, the problems and solutions shown are directly valid for all mankind. And I, you know, I could tell he was talking down to me. <laughs> so I, 
I was going to mess with them a little bit, you know. I said, well, I'm piercing pagodas. I know they're in South Carolina and Vermont, but I don't know about all over mankind. And he just kept on, you know, he said, the unconscious sends all sorts of vapors, odd beings, terrors, and deluding images up into the mind whether in dream, broad daylight, or insanity. For beneath the floor of the comparatively neat little dwelling that we call our consciousness goes down into unsuspected Aladdin caves. And I thought, that's exactly where I started digging. <laughs> it was underneath my grandmama's house when I was a kid. And that's, you know, I, but they made me quit when the edge of the porch started sloping down. <laughs> And my grandmama fell over backwards off of it. And he finally got fed up. He said, genius has its limitations. Stupidity is not thus handicapped. And I said, well, be what you is. I said, because if you be what you ain't, then you ain't what you is. I hit him with a thought loop. <laughs> and he said, could you repeat that, please? I said, all right, listen up, dumb butt. <laughs> I told him again. He sort of straightened up. And then he was like, you know, a single conversation across the table from a wise man is worth more than a month's study of books. I said, well, you ought to be glad I came by. <laughs> I think they want to get on with the um, entertainment part of the show. So um, anyway, I just y'all just keep doing what y'all's doing. Congratulations to newlywed Mike and Angela Beardley. Happy seventy. Happy. Happy. <laughs> that helps me. Doctor gave me that to do if I get stomach. Uh -huh. <laughs> Happy 54th anniversary to Dolly and Glenn Huffner. <laughs> Happy, <fix> <laughs> uh -huh. Happy 56th anniversary to Reginald and Grace McKinney. Happy, Happy 80th birthday to Walter T. Campbell. Yeah, nudge him, tell him what's happening. <laughs> Flojeka Ding Dongerston. Your new name is available in the lobby. <laughs> Would you do me a favor? Would you go out to my car and get my bongos out? It's a beige um, tercel. It's got a baby spare on the front left by the dumpster. Um, they, they said the dancers have to rest. I don't know. It's a union thing. But, so, or either that or they're getting old. I don't know. But... I'm, supp it's, I'm supposed to just be doing curtain maintenance. That's what they hire me for, curtain maintenance. And get here and the first thing they do is tell me, oh, it's not just one curtain, it's curtain. That's, there's that big curtain and there's this flimsy one. It looks like a slip. <laughs> do women still wear slips? I ain't even said slip in a long time. Used to, you'd hear about them, all, you know. No, don't come in, I'm in my slip. <laughs> now I guess y'all just pull on your britches and go. <laughs> but you're still the last ones in the car. <laughs> Man, there's, there's some good looking women here tonight. There's got to be. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I don't, I just, I don't know. I get around a bunch of women. I can't help but just cut up with them. Because women love to laugh, too. I mean, I just, I don't know. They're just, 
They're like sitting ducks. <laughs> if, they, you know, if they're not laughing, it's you know, because they're thinking about how they want to be laughing. Just, if you can get a woman to laughing, you can talk her into stuff. <laughs> if she ain't laughing, she's just going to be sitting there going, no. I don't want to go look at router bits. You get them laughing. That's what, you know, I think women laugh more than men do. Like if they did a, um, one of those USA Today charts on it, you know, who laughs or whatever they call it. You know, I bet the stack of women's mouths would be a lot higher than the men's. You know, a lifetime stack of them. And that's probably why y'all live longer than we do. But who are you laughing at? You're laughing at us. We could live longer, but we'd rather make y'all laugh. Somebody's got to. Y'all just ain't that funny. You know, people try to make men and women the same, but they're not. They're different. I mean, they're just, you know, like, well, you know, women probably can't help a lot of the stuff they do, just like men can't help it. It's, It's in their blood, you know, like, or like, you know how women have those, all those um, extra organs up in there? There's probably like a little extra, like a little raisin-sized organ that they ain't even discovered. It, it shoots out like laugh juice, like ha, 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 ha. And that's why y'all laugh more, you know. You know, like when 14-year-old four, girls, you know how they get to giggling, they giggle a lot. That's, because their raisins are fresh. <laughs> you get 79 years old, it's like your raisin is to give out. You know? <laughs> you got it. You got. If you're going, if you're going to stay not divorced. To a woman, you gotta, you know, keep them, keep their raisins flinching. <laughs> I, well, I, I think, I'm, I don't know, it may not be true, but you don't know. But <laughs> I think when a woman laughs, it, it just, you know, the squirts out and goes out into their blood, it goes to their brain and makes them not hate your guts because you're so boring. <laughs> That's how it is. I know. That's how I've stayed not divorced. I mean, you just got to entertain them. That's it. My wife, um, Dot, she's, well, that's her name, Dot. I don't know. I, don't know. I say Dot nowadays. People go, huh. I don't know. People, you know, people don't name their kid Dot no more. If you, if you meet a dot, it's probably an old dot. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to meet a fresh dot. <laughs> but I'll be honest with you, I've been, I got married too young because I don't remember it. <laughs> but, I guess you, I think you, when you're 19 and you get married, you do you do stuff to yourself the night before that will make everything else after that seem not so bad. <laughs> That's what I did. I don't know. But you just Dot's been good though. She's always picking up jobs and stuff. You know, she she can't sit around. She's always doing something like this summer. She was. She came up with this. She was teaching uh, aerobics to senior citizens in the swimming pool at our apartments in the chalet Inn. Well, the first class she did it was in the deep end, and a lot of people dropped out. <laughs> But 
But I was so glad when, the, you know, when that, she stopped giving those classes. I got tired of waking up in my house and finding old people in wet bathing suits <laughs> in my kitchen, you know. And my chair just stayed damp. <laughs> but now she's got a, um, it's a pretty good job. It's easy. It was hard at first, but she works down at um, Dexter, Chrysler, Jeep, Saab, Daewo, Suzuki, John Deere. <laughs> It was hard at first because she had to say that every time she answered the phone. But we, st we stayed up the night before she started and practiced it. But I'll call her up, you know. Every now and then I'll call her up and mess with her, you know, and I'll say stuff like, The alternator on my Jeep Cherokee keeps whistling and chirping. I can't believe this expensive vehicle. There's no excuse for this. I'm going to come down there right now with a bag of lemons and hit every one of you. You can duck behind your lemons to get away from the lemons. And she'll say, Ricky, isn't there anything on TV? <laughs> See, you know, I, you know, we go, you know, we go round and round about stuff. We've been arguing about her, her knickknacks. She has a lot of knickknacks. And I call them doodads. And it makes her mad. I just know they're knickknacks. And I say, well, they're doodads. I don't want to say knickknacks. I feel like a sissy if I say knickknacks. <laughs> what difference does it make? They're still doodads. You know? But I don't, you know, if, if she let me have a motorcycle, she could call it a casserole dish. I wouldn't care. <laughs> just so long as when I got back home, she was still there with her doodads. <laughs> She kills me. She's about four foot eleven and three quarters. But she tells people she's five foot. And I'll go, no, you crazy, you know. But when she when she gets her hair big, she's like five three. <laughs> but this this is what I, I mean, this is my best thing I do with Doc. About this may not work for you, but about once a week, I'll moon her. I've mooned her in every room of the house. Even the walk-in closet. You can do long-distance moons, too. Last, I think it was last summer I got her from the end of the pier. And those, you know, long-distance ones are the hardest to do because you just... You know, it takes about 10 minutes sometimes for them to notice you. <laughs> and you just got to ignore what the fishermen are saying. <laughs> but I don't, I'm sort of cut down on my mooning now because we got a young cat. But, um, <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> they put Dot on Panaplex and it's to slow down her blinking. She's a real, I mean, to speed it up, she's a slow blinker. And our car insurance went up, you know, because a lot of stuff can happen while you're in the dark. <laughs> but Panaplex, that's... Oh, oh, I'm memorizing the back, the back label of it. I just, I don't know, I like to memorize stuff. It's good for your um, brain to do that. You know, you probably put off Alzheimer's by about seven weeks. <laughs> if you just do enough brain exercise, it's like little push-ups. Like. That's what a brain sounds like when it's doing push-ups. I can do all kinds of sounds. You ever heard a um, dog barking inside a car in the parking lot with the windows rolled up? It's like. <laughs> I'm 
go up and down the aisles. I'll find him. <laughs> said, you don't know that dog. You know, he can have his tail caught in the window. <laughs> A lot of people roll up the windows with those key deals. And, bloop, bloop, and you know, the dog don't know about them. Go, <laughs> you can't expect dogs to keep up with technology like that, but... This is what it says on the back of her Panaplex pills. It says, you may experience one or more of the following side effects when taking Panaplex. Watery eyes, itchy scalp, shortness of breath, runny nose, insomnia, bone spurs, chapped lips, vertigo, halitosis, hip dysplasia, Tourette syndrome, camel toes, hiccups, narcolepsy, hay fever, Pain attacks, panic attacks, hypertension, varicose veins, sudden increase in body hair, <laughs> and sensitivity to Walmart lighting. <laughs> she takes it because she says it evens her out. <laughs> science is just amazing. Have y'all have y'all been following science? I mean, it just keeps going up and up. You know? They're cloning. Stuff. That's they cloned a cat about what three four months ago, and that's we don't need to be cloning things that are higher up on the life chain like that. That's they're gonna get near people, you know. They keep going up and up. And we don't need to be cloning people. Oh, that um, this this will show you why the cloning is not a good. You know how people jump out of a you know car if they see a tornado off and they videotape it. Well, I did that, and could y'all run that, that footage now? This will show you why cloning is not good. Now, this, this wasn't far off the highway. I mean, something ain't right. And you can tell, though, the cows don't really like him. Anyway, that's, that's just one of the things. I mean, I just saw that. But we don't need to be cloning people like that, whether or not they come out right or not. I mean, people are, people are everywhere now. You, we don't need to be making copies of the people we got. I mean, wherever, you, wherever you go and the people aren't there, if you come back, there they are. You're getting on my nerves. You, you can go out in the middle of the desert. There'll be somebody behind a rock with a cell phone going, can you hear me now? <laughs> oh, thanks. Did you put them together for me? Thanks. I, don't, I know that was back in the trunk. This is my drum wagon. I got this off eBay for about 19 cents. <laughs> And this, these help me with my hyperness, you know, because we can't afford for both of us to be on um, prescription. Um, but I come up with an um, idea for Taco Bell, and I want to try to get this on TV. But, um, you know, they fired that dog. <laughs> and now he's working for Geico. <laughs> but you, you know, you can tell he ain't happy. I wish, he, I wish he'd come back to Taco Bell, but they need something else, you know, be like this. It'd be like. Carl say, what's that smell? 
You won't be able to help yourself. You go, Taco Bell! <laughs> and it may not be that at all. <laughs> you know, that's how commercials are. They gotta be stupid for you to remember. <laughs> I've just been teaching myself how to play. That's, you know, that's, you come up with stuff that nobody ever thought of when you do that. Like that drummer that works here, he's probably, you know, been to drum camp. <laughs> but everything that he knows, somebody taught him. But everything that I know, I made it up myself. So there's some stuff. He, he could probably learn some stuff from me. <laughs> I can see you through that nightgown. <laughs> All right, let's see if you can um, do this. Just, just play together a little bit. You just do what I do, see if you can do it. I bet he, I wish he could do this with his drums, probably. I bet he can't. <laughs> Man, I, I need a raise from all the stuff I do around here. They just ignore me when I say I need more money. I, Man, I, I'm so hungry after tonight. Just, oh, ooh, what is that? My finger has been killing me. I slammed it in the trunk of a car and drove off. And action. Hey, Ricky, we got something out here on the curtain, the stage curtain. If you could come out here and get that off before the show starts, that'd be super. 